I truly feel that the next verses that we're going to talk about today is going to open your eyes in the sense of, am I worshiping the right God? Am I worshiping the right person? When we are in a desperate need, we cry out to God. But when things are good, who do we cry out to? You're going to find out that when things go well and things go bad, we need to have that communication, that relationship with this God. He has a name. He's not just a God. He is the God. And his name is Yahweh. What's his name? Yahweh. That's God the Father. That is his name. Okay? Yahweh, that is his name. And there's a way to spell it. It's been changed, right? Because we love vowels for some reason, right? We can't leave the Bible alone. We got to put our stinky hands in this stuff. But that's, if you go in Scripture, in the, in the Greek and the Hebrew, you find out that we, we messed it up. We messed it up with our translations. You know, so there was no vowel. So if you take the vowels out, that's the real spelling of Yahweh, just in case you wanted to know. First Kings chapter 18, as we're going through this, verse 20, as we're going into a challenge, Elijah is about to challenge God, a God that is the God of lightning, fire, of rain. They, they, they labeled him all the, the things that they needed, right? They labeled him all those things. But you find out that it's, it's not working for them. And I would think, right, after so many years of praying to a God that doesn't work, why do we continue doing that, right? It's, it's like, why am I constantly sacrificing to someone or something that doesn't hear me, speak to me, doesn't do anything for me? But if you notice, there is plenty of religions, okay, and plenty of denominations. 42,000 denominations. That's quite a bit. And if you go back to the Bible, it started with one church. So from one church, we've, we've done so much. You know why? Because we just want something or a God or we worship a church or we worship the, the man that's preaching. And so we determine that that's the right thing. When the message is focused toward the man, it's not of God. Please listen to me. When the message is focused on the man, it's not of God. When the message is focused on the word, that's of God. When the worship songs are focused on I, me, I and me, it's not of God. But when the songs are focused on God, on Yahweh, they're His. So not everything that you listen on the Christian radio is Christian. Not everything that you watch on TVN or God TV is of God. Because there's some pretty crazy fools on those shows. The thing is that it's I and me. Let me close it by doing this. I lost a family in church because I didn't do baptisms live on the internet. And because I didn't do baby dedications live on the internet. If I have to do that to promote what God is doing, I'm wrong. And I am saying that every church that does it is wrong. We should keep the main thing the main thing. Amen. I only heard two amens here. And let me tell you why. When we're promoting that, we're telling people, look, we're growing. God is doing something there. No, he's not. You're pushing an agenda that is not his. He didn't have cameras at the Jordan River. He didn't have cameras at the temple when he's dedicating children in the book of Mark. So Eli is always going to follow what's in Scripture. So do I want to lose someone? I don't. That's not my intention. But I don't do what you say. You're the sheep. I'm the shepherd. Or should I say the under-shepherd? Please. If you can edit that, Josh, I am not the shepherd. I am the under-shepherd. I'm just the worker. Okay? I'm the worker with a big mouth. That's what I am. So we cannot change or do things that are not allowed. That's why the presence of God doesn't show up and we haven't noticed it. It's the exact the same thing that's happening in 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 20 and on. They've been doing everything public, right? They called all the prophets. They called all the people. Come and look at Baal and come and look at Jezebel. Look at the things that they have done for us. 
They're publicizing something, right? But see, they haven't, they don't know that for three and a half years, God's been preparing the man of God to go do some business or to go to war. When God has set you apart and you choose to be separate or separated, God uses you. He can use someone like you because you're not distracted or easily distracted. If you're focused, got to put the phone aside, the TV aside, the news aside and say, you know what? God, what do you want me to do? Am I serving you the right way or am I making things up as I'm going? Because the less I think I'm serving you, the less I read the Bible. So that's not God. Those three and a half years, God is teaching and training Elijah. Does he know his work? He does. Because three and a half years before, he stopped the rain. He stopped rain from coming. There is absolutely nothing coming down. But what's interesting about the chap- chapter 17 is that he says, when I say so, it'll rain again. That's pretty powerful for someone to say on my word, on my speech, it'll rain again. And it doesn't rain. Guess what happens to God's people? I'm not talking about the unbeliever. I'm talking about God's people, the one he chose, the ones that carry that brand or that blood. These are the Jewish people, the Hebrew children. They turn against God. They turn against Yahweh. They turn against him. You know why? They were upset. But it all begins by one person bringing poison into the relationship, to the, what God is trying to do. So not only is Elijah ready for this battle, but he's been preparing for it. You cannot, you cannot prepare your Thanksgiving meal to minister to your family the day of Thanksgiving. You have to start now. Well, it's just a holiday. It might be to you. It's not to me. I only eat turkey one time a year. I make it special. It's important to me. The preparations, the spices, we already started with that stuff. I haven't bought the turkey or the ham because it's too expensive. We might do chicken turducky, whatever they call that thing. The, the, the thing that's confused doesn't know which three animals it is. Or a rabbit, I don't know, whatever. Whatever we can find in someone's ranch. Let me see, anybody here? So this is what's happening to these people. They were at one point believers of Yahweh. Now they're not. You know why? Because it didn't go their way. How many times do you turn from God when it's not your way? When it doesn't look like it's working out for me. That's what they're going to battle for. And what's really interesting, I wanted to bring a, a, an altar. I wanted to make one. Uh, you know, but I just, I just, I need you to think for a moment. I need you to think the very best that you have for King Jesus, what would it be? See, because I can show you, I can make something here with some bricks and some wood and all that stuff. And I can show you, but you know, I have the perfect example right here in God's word. And it says, this is how they did it. This is what happens at this battle. And this battle is huge. To make an unbeliever that once believed a believer again is very difficult. We call that, which is not correct, but a backslider. Such an ugly word. Such an offensive word. So you're telling me, Allison, that you can be a child of God and no, and no longer a child of God and a child of God whenever you want to activate it and deactivate it? Folks, if you're not reading your Bible, that is not in the Bible. The Bible says that he does not revoke his gift. Do I have any Bible readers here? He doesn't revoke his gift. How many times do you want to crucify Jesus on Sundays? We can't keep on putting him on the cross. Are you serious? But that's what's happening to these people in 1 Kings chapter 18. They have no clue. You know why? Because their God has been silent. What do you do when your God is silent? Do you give up? Do you quit? Because it's not moving my way? Did you hear what I said earlier today? It's not about you. It's not about me. When the songs talk about me, 
I'm going to fail people. When the message is pointing to the preacher and not to the word, I failed you already. But if we stick to the gospel, we tell the people exactly what they need to know, they will always understand that they can always run to Jesus. But see, we're giving them false hope. You know what? If, if you keep on sinning, you're going straight to hell. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Because when I read the Bible, there's a time of repentance. There's a time and a place where I have to come to him and say, you know what? I need a second chance, Jesus. And how many of you in here are in about two or 3,000 chance, right? Right, John? I remember you. That guy's got about 2,000 chances already. And that's last week. Uh, come on, any sinners in here that have been redeemed by the blood? Are you serious? I'm telling you. You have to understand that to know the value of his blood. One little drop can change you today. You don't have to be washed like Carrie. Remember that movie? <laughs> Nothing like that. I don't know why I went there, but you know what I'm talking about. You're stuck in a closet. Some of you need to go in the closet and start praying, you know? The thing is that this battle that they're about to have, listen to me, even Elijah messes up. I'm trying to give you a mental picture. Elijah messes up because when he, he's confronted, when he comes out of the cave, you know what he says? I'm the only one. What in the world? How arrogant can you be? He says that, listen to me, not with the presence or with the power of God. He says it because he's ignorant. That just shows you that not even the big boys in the Bible are prideful. I know a lot of people like me that are very prideful. I couldn't even tell what color jacket I had last week. So I just decided to bring a black one today. Because <laughs> who's stony? Stony? I'm, I mean, I had all people in here. And I had to apologize to some people. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to offend you if I... But you know what? We got to get it right. But what if we don't get it right? What if we don't get it right? And you're like me. Let's go to the Bible. Let's find out what happens. You ready for this ride? This is a good ride. Verse 22. If you start at verse 20, you're there. But we only did two verses last week. I don't know why. But we spent 40 minutes on two verses. There's like a dare inside the church that hopefully I finish today. Don't bet any money on that. Because this is, this is too good for us to go through too fast. It's, it, Bridgeway is not buffet style. It's, you're going to have to take your time because we're going we're gonna to prepare it piece by piece. Listen to this. I'm reading out of the NASB version of the Bible. Verse 22. Then Elijah said to the people, listen to what he says. I alone am left a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Now let them give us two oxen and let them choose one ox for themselves and cut it up and place it on the wood, but put no fire under it, and I will prepare the other ox and lay it on the wood, and I will not put a fire under it. Then you call in the name of your God, little g, and I will call on the name of the Lord. What's his name? Yahweh. And the God who answers by fire. He is Yahweh. He is God. And all the people said, that is a good idea. Now, let me pray. Because I'm going to hit you with something really hard here. But Father, use what you taught me, Father, this week about these sessions that we're going to go through a battle and we're going to have to decide on, on what God and what knee and wh what position and what will we say. I pray that we, Father, can open our eyes, that you first remove the scales that we can see truly the kind of God that we serve in Jesus' name. Amen. Hold me on 25. Let me share something with you that it begins on verse 22. I don't want you to miss this. I don't want you to miss this. Elijah says to the people, I am alone and the prophet of the Lord. I'm the only one. And Baal says, you have prophets, you have 450. Listen to verse 23, how he's 
dictating the fight. Listen to how he's dictating the battle. Listen to how he's enforcing, this is how you're going to do it. This is how I'm going to do it. And this is where we're going to find out whose God is God. Now, if you notice, he's not giving them any options. That's what's wrong with our people today. We don't know enough word to demand what God wants from us. Did you hear that? We don't have enough knowledge on what God wants us to do with life that we allow the world to dictate how we live our life. We've adapted to new cultures and new ideas that we have forgotten God. We forgot Yahweh. Instead of going to him before tomorrow's day of work, we're already upset that tomorrow is Monday and we're going back to work. I thought we were happy because we had a paycheck. If you don't work, you shouldn't eat. That's what the Bible says. How many skinny people would we have today? We have chunkies and fluffies. But that's what the Bible says. Now listen. If we were to stand on God's word, the word of God would stand for us. The fact that we don't know him, we don't know who stands for us. When we go into a fight or into a battle, you can't go in there with physical skills. You have to go in there with spiritual skills. The Bible says that he is spirit. He is spirit. And we are his temple. We are his temple. That means that he's wanting to pour into someone's vessel. And you could be that vessel today. Having that knowledge and having that wisdom, not only will you have something to work with, you'll know exactly what to do with it. Right? How many of you in this room know the difference between two screwdrivers? You have a standard and a Phillips. How many of you have ever been lazy and used a standard to unscrew a Phillips screw? Raise your hands. Don't be a bunch of liars. We don't have liars here. Raise your hand. Lazy. You know where it's at. You know, but you got the wrong one, right? Because you thought wrong. But you know what we do? We force things into something that doesn't work, right, my engineer? You do it right. You cannot put something in something don't fit. Remember that game that our children would have, the little blocks and the little star and the little angles, and you were trying to see if your kid was going to make you a lot of money as an engineer, like this guy, you know? And, and it ends up, oh, no, he's going to be working, sorry, in the city as a water guy. He's right there. Eesh. It came out, man. I'm so sorry. That's because he's good to me. I'm sorry, man. You even have my last name. Forget it. Change your last name. But that's just the way it works, right? We want things to be easier, right? But we want a big result of something so minor and lazy that we do. We want God to work in our behalf. We don't pray. We don't fast. We don't read our Bible. We're not kind. We're not generous. We're not gracious. We're not forgiving. We're none of those things. But we want God. But see, God is all those things. Remember what I said earlier? He's wanting to pour into somebody. And that somebody could be you. Just depends how you get out of here. You ready to go further? 25. So Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one ox for yourself and prepare it first for you are many. And call in the name of your God, but put no fire under it. Then they took the ox which was given them and they prepared it. And called on the name of Baal from morning, listen to this, until noon. O Baal, answer us. O Baal, answer us. But there was no voice and no one answered. And they leaped about the altar which they made. Now, you need to see something here. Keep that up for me. Who do I have back there? Katie? Keep, 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 keep that last verse can you give me just the last verse I just read by itself? Is that possible? No? Yes? Up there? Perfect. Perfect. Listen. Listen to 26, but I want you to listen closely to the ending of it. I don't, I, I don't want you to miss this. Please. O Baal, answer us. But there was no voice and no one answered. Now listen to the last line. They leaped about the altar which they made. 
Hold me on 27. Listen. This is, this is going to be bad. When you have to do any personal extra things to try to get God to work on your behalf, we are a bunch of fools. Did you get that? When you have to dance around it and throw yourself on the floor and do all those things and you think all that, folks, God does not work with that. I am telling you, we have changed the church. You know why? Because we want to be pleasing to the eyes instead of God. God doesn't want any of those things. If you notice, they were jumping over. I would jump, but I don't want a screw, a Phillips screw to come out of my back. Because I have four back there, right? They had to put me back together five years ago, right? You know, and, and, and so they were jumping over it and dancing and thinking and the flags. And you know what I'm talking about, the tambourines and the bell and the woodblock. Oh, I remember that in the church where I was at. And I would ask, why are you guys doing all that stuff? Oh, it's because we're calling the Holy Spirit to come. <gasps> I didn't know that you could activate it and deactivate it. <laughs> Remember what I said? Eli is bad. See, you can be bad like me if you read the Bible. If not, you're going to follow what everybody else does. I, I said that, Mark. You know that's true. You know it's true. We do what everybody says. You know why? Because we're followers. We're not leaders. And our world has given us that. So the Bible doesn't teach the things that we think that are happening in church. So they're jumping over the jumping and doing all this stuff. Let's get deeper into what they do to themselves to get the attention of their God. Where was I? 26? And they took the ox which was given to them and prepared it and called it the name of Baal from morning until noon. Obal answered us. Listen to this. They leaped. Verse 27. It came about at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, call out with a loud voice, for he is a God. Either, listen to this, he is occupied or gone aside or is on a journey or perhaps he is asleep and needs to be awakened. Remember, he started a little arrogant. He still is. But this time is different. This pride was different. It changed from a personal to I know who my God is. If people only knew the power of God, remember, Jesus even said it. If you only knew the power of God. If you only knew the power of God. If you only knew who was telling you, give me of your water, right? If you only knew, John chapter 5. The thing is that we don't know. We don't know because we don't read. We're waiting for something to happen when what happened is already in front of us. Now listen to verse 28. So they cried with a loud voice and they cut themselves. You hear that? Something that we see a lot today with young people, with older women, they cut themselves. Somehow there's an understanding with pain to quiet the voices in their head. Listen to this. They were cutting themselves according to their customs. How in the world can this be a custom? Lances. Until the blood gushed out of them. When midday had passed, they raved until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Wasn't raving like something in the 90s? You remember in the 90s? Remember that music? You remember. You probably still play it in your truck, in your 4x4 truck. But there was no voice, no answer, and no one paid attention. No one. Then Elijah said to all the people, come near me. So all the people came near him, and he repaired, listen to this, he repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. See, and that's my big question, who tore it down? And I'm going to go on a limb, this is my opinion. 
Please, don't judge my opinion. I'm thinking that the same people that at one point or another worshipped Yahweh have now destroyed the altar. Three and a half years of not hearing, no water, no nothing, no food, they can't grow anything. I say God's people destroyed it. Can I tell you who's going to destroy the church in the 21st century or the 21st century now? It's the people. The people is going, are going to destroy the church. They're going to destroy the temple. They're going to destroy, this is not an altar. I call it a platform. It's the, this is not an altar. And so people have destroyed what God has placed as holy. So if I, 31, somebody hold me there. I got to take you to the cross. Do you mind if I take you there? Are you okay with that? Let me take you to the cross. Let me tell you how important that and the cross is, how it connects. The altar has been broken. The altar, I, I think that they maybe they stole parts of it. I think they ripped the stones away. I think they did what they were not supposed to do with it. That's what I'm thinking, my opinion here. But it's not until Jesus comes into the picture, he goes through his sacrifices, then he goes to the cross, that what happens when he is at the cross and he expires or he does or takes his last breath? What happens at the temple? Do you remember that? What's ripped in half? Exactly. No one could go into the holy of holies unless you were a high priest and sinless, perfect, no type of deformation, no ears cut off. That's why Jesus puts the ear back on the high priest. You cannot be deformed going into the temple. You got to be right. You got to wear the little bells just in case, but you have to be right. What happened to that attitude, folks? What happened to that character or that standard when we come to God's house? What happened to that when we talk to people about Jesus? So there had to be death on a cross, the worst ever, Roman style. No other way has been more crude, more horrible than the Roman style of death. Cutting their heads off and putting them on a stick. There you are. There you have your Christians. That's what happens. So Elijah's ready to show them the power of God. It's midday. What's, you know what's interesting? That he didn't start first. It gave him time to reconnect with God for the next three to six hours. Can I, can I say that again? He didn't go first, Right? The first shall be last, the last shall be, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? You can connect all that there. Listen to the trueness of this verse. He didn't go first because it was important for him to spend more time with him before the showdown. You can't put your pants on and your clothes on and brush your teeth and go straight to work and not count on God. Not say, God, I give you my day. I give you my troubles for the day because today I'm going to probably mess up and I'm probably going to tell somebody some bad stuff, like twice. I mean, if you know the kind of work that we all work, we're going to lose it during the day. What happens is this. When you give yourself a little bit more time with the king, you become kingdom-minded. You become part of the kingdom. You become part of what it really matters. When you cut yourself short or you limit yourself, you have less power to work with. It took three and a half years for him to be so arrogant and the good pride to confront 450 prophets against one. That's what he thought, right? But there was still a few coming out of the caves. Remember, there was 50 in each cave. They were coming out and they were well maintained. What does that mean? They didn't eat anything that was foul. Even though in chapter 17, remember, God is feeding Elijah with the raven, right? And he gives him a little brook and there's a little bird dropping off some food. He says, I'm not going to eat that stuff. It's dirty. It's wrong for me. I am special. I am the prophet Elijah. And God tells him, uh, do you know who just fed you, boy? 
Do you want me to bring what I'm supposed to bring into your life? I mean, he got, he got arrogant with God. How many times do we get that way with God? I didn't want this. I wanted that. Yeah, but this is what you need. You need this. You need, you need some time with God. You need some time in his presence. So what happens next? Where am I, 31? Thank you. Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of what? The tribes of the sons of Jacob. Listen to how there is a relationship. Listen to me. He's not doing something on his own. He's going back to what he knows. Connecting the people, connecting the power, connecting the knowledge to the God of knowledge. To Yahweh. He was not going to do something new or fresh, right? You can come. Look, I, I got, you got to come to my church. We're doing something new. Don't go. Don't go. You know what I like? Can I tell you something? Hold me on 31 and a half. Okay? I like it when I go somewhere to have lunch or dinner and they have not changed the recipe. I keep on ordering what I like. When you start experimenting, you got some crazy guy in the back trying to, his spices that his great, 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 great grandma gave him, I won't go back. Because I know how you and how I like it. I know what I'm about. Right? I know. Why are we trying to change the gospel? Why are we trying to change the message of repentance and, and salvation? Why are we trying to fool or tell people if you jump three times on one foot, this is gonna happen? No. Let's, let's do worship for two hours and then, and then the Holy Spirit will come and then you know, we'll, we'll preach if we have time. Zero. Run from a place like that. We cannot mold God into something he never told you to mold him by or for. He knows who he is and what he is. 31 and a half. Thank you. He says, to whom the word of the Lord had come saying, Israel shall be your name. Just imagine he's recalling on the power of God by the names of the people that had the power of God. Sometimes you just have to pray to Jesus. Because he's the power of heaven. He's the one that resurrected the dead. The blind were able to see. The leper was cleansed. Can you imagine? Someone's hand is like this. And then Jesus says, stretch out your hand. But I've been like this for so many years. Stretch it. Okay, I'm telling you to do it. Whoa, what in the world? Do we not believe that he can do that again? You know why he doesn't? Because we have too many options in this world. We're not trusting what Elijah just said. 32. So with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench around the altar, large enough to hold two measures of seed. Then he arranged the wood and cut the ox in pieces and laid it on the wood. And he said, fill your pitchers, four, fill four pitchers with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood, and he said, do it a second time. And then he said, second time, and he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. The water flowed around the altar, and he also filled the trenches with water. Why is this important? Reverting back or referring back, whichever the right word is. When you go back to the principle of whenever God spoke to you and showed you in his scripture... That he would change your life. Go back to it every time you fall. Go back to that day. Somehow we've lost the value of the kingdom. We've lost it. You know why? Because we don't believe that we belong to that kingdom. I act like I'm six foot five when I'm not. But you can tell me all day long that I'm not, but I am. In my head, I've believed it. I've called it. How many years, Jason? 18, you've been with me? 18 years. You want to come here? Let me show the whole world what size I look like in my head. I got to show it to you. This guy, this kid has been with me for so many years. Even if he's down there, he's still taller than me. But look at this, this, look at this wonderful kid. Look at that. This is, 
This is what I look like in my head. This is a Polaroid moment right here. How many of you love Jason? You love Jason? Love you, man. Let me tell you, that's what I think I look like. Why are you laughing? <laughs> but see, what's, what's happened is that the devil has minimized you so much that you don't believe anything that God has called into your life. God's called so many things into your life and you don't think you're any, of any value. Are you serious? Without raising your hands, just nod your head. Anybody here go through addiction at one time or another? I went through it. And you know who saved me from that? Jesus did. You know why? Because he saw something better in me that I didn't see myself. So I don't care what you say. You like 6'5"? No. I like 6'5 because I'm like this big. But in reality, I'm this 5'6 on a windy day. And you're like, what does that look like on a windy day? Just imagine. I'm, just give me something, okay? <laughs> Golly. It's like I'm in a comedy show or something here. You know why it's important to understand? The God that we serve is eternal. The God that we have is the greatest thing ever. But we act like our God is in our back pocket. We act like he can't beat anyone anymore. That's, I, that's, that's not good for me. We are going to defeat this world. we got to go back to his word. But listen to me. Can I tell you something? We cannot stop being kind, respectful, generous, loving, and gracious to people. Because the people around us are looking at us. And if they're going to see the true gospel in us, we have to know who he is. And what his name is. And why he died on the cross for us. And that you are still covered by that blood. You've just been lost for just a moment. Right? Like that dog that leaves home, right? And he ends up in three states away from you. And then they, he, they return him back to you. What is wrong with that dog, right? He was probably running from you. Just get over it. But somehow it returns, right? Because it knows its smell. Why is it so hard for us to return to him? He says, return to me. Come to me. Return to me. And you know what James says? Draw near to me. Oh, what, are you serious? I can get near you? Yeah. I just want you to come a little bit closer. The more I seek you, the more I find you. See? How much do you need him? That's the question today. Your sin is not greater than the blood of Jesus. One drop of his blood will wipe it all away. But you have to get to his word. Let's keep ourselves righteous by staying in his word. 